be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to this episode of Rabbit Trail. I am here today in the woods with my partner in crime, Max Pasiano. Max, how you doing, buddy? Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm good. I'm as good as you can possibly be on this wonderful day. That's and uh, every morning I get up, I look and see what kind of cards I've been dealt, and I deal with those cards for that day. It's a one day at a time life right now. Hey, that's all you can you know, do. You know, you know what I mean? One hundred percent. You know, today yeah. the the internet is broken. Oh my God! Is that amazing or what? It's like you know, no, no Instagram, no Facebook, no, uh, no WhatsApp. None of those. Nope. I mean, what are people doing? They're going to have to talk to each other. They're going to have to talk to each other. My God. Hey, man, crazy. Enjoy the silence. That's what I said. <laughs> Peace and quiet. Yeah, because yeah, I was just, I didn't know that it was shut down until I talked to you uh, an hour or two ago. And, but I knew it was funny because this morning I had a class and I was trying to log on to, to Instagram and I kept getting cannot cannot refresh the, your page and i went yeah Ooh, something's wrong i i immediately checked my router and you know looked to make sure everything else was working because yeah. i knew yeah. i knew i was online but anyway oh, ah, well. so here we are on a monday after our first session of hair color school which was yesterday wow uh, it was so great. One, number one, we had a full class. We're very excited about that. Uh, they were all eager to learn. They had tons of questions. Uh, you know, tons of discoveries were made. Uh, I noticed last night before the internet went down this morning on our messaging kind of thread that we have with our entire group that we're with for the next 30 days that uh, a lot of discoveries, a lot of like, wow, this has been amazing and all of that. And the crazy thing is, we had a three-hour class yesterday, almost three hours, two hours and 47 minutes, mm -hmm. and we just talked about hair. It was just the hair part. It wasn't the color wheel. It wasn't yeah. formulation. It was just understanding the hair and what it contributes to the end result. And so... I, I just, I, I felt so good that we were able to go in depth with some of the information, things that people probably don't know about the hair and how, what it contributes to the end result in a color servant. Mm -hmm. And um, I was surprised that people didn't know that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you know, do you understand that, you know, there's more than one cuticle layer on the hair? Do you understand right. that even in the cuticle the cuticle layers have sub layers. <laughs> you know, do you understand that, uh, you know, medication and all that stuff that we're concerned about building up in the hair comes from the sebaceous glands, doesn't come from the hair internally at all. Right. I think everyone has this picture in their mind that when they're using a medication removal treatment or a demineralizing treatment, that they're going internally into the hair and they're really not. You know, right. most of our work is done in the cuticle, right? Yeah. Right. Well, and same with like any kind of chelator. A lot of people have this idea that it's like, it's, it's not surface acting. It's actually doing something inside. And that's not the truth. You're working on the surface. It's not. That's right. Yeah. It's like the, the cuticle layers are kind of like the jungle before you get to the, the treasure, which is the cortex. Right. And, you know, there, there's layers. There's several layers. It's plural. It's not singular. Sure. And, and there's some characteristics that, um, you know, it's responsible for protecting the hair. So, you know, when we talk about hair being porous, it's because there's loss of cuticle or there's holes in the cuticle, rips, tears, gaps, whatever. And uh, that's really what we're working on where we're balancing out porosity we're trying to fill in those or patch those gaps, you know? It's right. Like, it's like, I forget what that adhesive is that they advertise on TV where the guy, you know, he, there's a leak 
and he take goes underwater and just catches it with the special tape that he has. <clears throat> well, that's what you know. That's what some of these products are supposed to do. They're supposed to really, right. you know, penetrate and and penetration itself. And and don't fall into the curb. Don't fall over the gutter. But penetration is a broad brush in the world of hair care, because actually, if my product can penetrate two to three layers of the cuticle, I can say we have penetration. <laughs> and, right. But people think penetration means getting all the way in. And most of those products are surface active products. They're not small enough. Exactly. And you know, what was, what was so interesting hearing in the, in the conversation in our group yesterday too, is, is that like, you know, sort of the, the metric that we use to measure, you know, the condition of the hair is that it has to feel soft and silky, you know, mm -hmm. and moisturized, but moisture is a very small percentage of what the hair is composed of. And, and really the, the majority of the, the hair strand is composed of protein. Protein gives the hair its strength and flexibility and, and it's the structure of the hair. So when we are altering the hair, which is a chemical structure and a protein structure right. with other chemicals as in hair color, lighteners, perm, you know, any kind of retexturing product, Etc. We are actually, yeah, you are losing some moisture from the hair, but you're literally whittling away at the structure of the hair. Right. So the protein first, moisture second, basically. But a lot of times, what what we and I mean, I was guilty of this too as a hairdresser before I really knew, you know, the the sort of components that make up the hair i would just be right. slapping stuff on because now we also live in a world where you have all these these products that give an incredible cosmetic feel to yes. the hair but the key word there you guys is cosmetic it's not yes it's it's like what is it it's it's not like a one and done thing it's like it's like from shampoo to shampoo that hair feels like hey and you put something on it that makes you feel great, but you're not actually squirting it structurally, usually when you shampoo it the next time, you got hay again. Right, right. You know, it's funny you should say that. This morning I had a one-on-one -on -one with uh, one of my students up in Montreal, and she wanted me to look at the ingredient decks on her products that she uses. And one of the products that she uses is supposed to equalize porosity. That's what it's supposed to do, right? Two of the key ingredients in there are polyquantrum 7 and polyquantrum 10. Okay, so both of those are copolymers, which means that they coat, they are film formers. You know, they make the hair feel smooth, but they don't add anything to the hair. There's nothing wrong with using those but they don't right. add anything to the hair. And she said, well, where is the protein in this product? <laughs> and I, we went down to the very bottom of her ingredient deck and then they had hydrolyzed wheat protein at the very, very bottom of her deck. The last ingredient, right? The last ingredient, yeah. And so I really think it's, a, you're right. In our industry, we, everything is by touch and by what we see with our eyes. And so when it looks okay to us and it feels okay, we consider it to be in good condition, even though we know that it's not, it, it's not in the best condition if it's just gone through a chemical service because we've changed the structure. Sure. We've, broken, we've broken it down. You know, I, I think that's why the micro photographs that we have that go internally and we do the scanning electron microscopes mm -hmm. the you know the horizontal slice the vertical slice on the hair strand where they can actually see that they can actually see the eumelanin melanocytes that are in the hair uh, yeah. they can actually see the the layers of the hair and where in your slide in that class where you point out the a b c d and e layers mm -hmm. 
and what they all do. I think once you get a deep dive like that into the hair, it gives you a lot more appreciation for the canvas that you're working on and yeah. a lot more respect for that canvas. Yeah, respect the fiber, right? Right. So, so because, Dennis, one, let, let me ask you a question from colorist sure. to colorist. Sure. If you, if you have a client sitting in, in your chair and if you really felt like, you know, their hair condition was questionable enough that you felt like you had to do something to even out the porosity, would you first do some kind of structural reinforcing treatment? Absolutely. As, as the equalizer, as opposed to like, you know, you hear some people, oh, I spray it with water or certain companies yeah. have what they would call an equalizing solution, but it's yeah. like, it's typically like a film forming type of product. Right. As if opposed to something that will actually exactly. be strength. Exactly. And if it's not, if there's nothing in there that's going to add more structure back to the hair, you're not going to repair the hair enough so that it will keep the hair from, you know, usually we use a porosity equalizer uh, to make the hair, enable the hair to accept color more evenly. But if you're using something that really doesn't equalize the porosity, that is not going to make the hair absorb the color service, you know, more evenly. And the reason the it absorbs it unevenly is because you're working with a blended color, you know, and so it's going to uptake of the background is going to be the strongest. So, so some of those things you have to make sure that you have ingredients in there that can actually plug the hole, if you right. will. You know, and if you don't have that, then you need to do a treatment to do that. I mean, uh, she also has a, a, what they call a porosity equalizer, which has, I mean, it's not, I told her, I said, it's not terrible, but it's not doing right. anything either. You're like setting a neutral. And she said, well, I don't want to set a neutral. I want to, you know, I want to do something to restructure the hair. So yeah, restructuring treatments are 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 wonderful to do. I don't know why people don't do that before a color service to begin with, because if you did it it's last really month, a... you broke down the structure of the hair. Right. And she comes in this month, you better rebuild it before you paint it or it won't color evenly for you. Well, I, I completely agree. Like, I think the whole, just even the whole idea of treatment to strengthen is almost like a lost sort of technology in our field. Right. right. Almost ev everything out there now is like, look good, feel good. And I remember when I was a brand new baby hairdresser, I would, I would go with my mom to the salon where she got her hair done. And my mom used to get color and perm and, yep. you know, but she would get, she would literally get a PPT treatment first, and then he'd follow it up with a climatrest treatment for yeah. moisture. So right. he'd strengthen the hair first, then, and the hair didn't ever feel good after you strengthened it. It felt hard because you actually feel. did re right. You did reinforce it. Then right. you put them back the missing moisture, and then you were good to go. Right. Well, see, here's you the know? thing: is that treatments like proteins mm -hmm. vegetable proteins or whatever you're using yeah those work deeper inside the hair moisturizers don't do that right moisturizers are really in the cuticle that's where the that's where 18 mea is and that's right. what we're trying to replace is 18 mea which is the cosmetic name for uh, the natural lipids between the cuticle layers so, right. so uh, sometimes we forget where we're working. You know, right. I, I used to always use the analogy of, okay, so how many of you understand the concept behind eating good food? You know, what does eating good food and proper nourishment, what does that do for us? And they would say, well, it makes us stronger. It makes us healthy. I said, right, treatments are food for the hair. They mm -hmm. feed the hair. I said, so what happens 
when the weather outside is inclement, if it's raining or snowing or anything, what do you do to protect yourself? Well, we put on a jacket. I say, that's what a conditioner is. A conditioner is a jacket to protect the hair from the elements. And that's the way you need to think about those two things that we work with. Now, the problem with us is we're all hung up on this, how fast can I get it done? And so now you have people who, who mix the food with the clothing and say, do it all at once. Well, I'm sorry, there's a difference in the molecular weight of those two types of products. <clears throat> so one is going to stop the other from penetrating as successfully as it could. Will it make the hair feel better if you do that? combo treatment sure probably feel good but will it be long lasting right. probably not but it sometimes we are up for instant gratification and not for long term not for right. actually rebuilding the hair and rebuilding the strength uh, i think a, a couple of reasons that we do that number one we we want to fit it into a time schedule and number two we don't want the client to say, well, I don't have time for this and go somewhere else because we're afraid somewhere else will get that business. And so we're really walking a tightrope. Uh, the problem is, is that you can't always do things in a shorter period of time. You know, it's, it's sort of like baking. You know, you, it takes a while to bake a souffle. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, there, there's some skill to that. Um, you know, so depending on what you're actually trying to do, and um, I, I totally agree with you. I think that whole philosophy, that whole mindset has been lost. Well, and, and also to charging accordingly yeah. for these things. If it takes more time to do it right, you know, it's like none of us wake up in the morning and go, I want to do this wrong. But I, I mean, I, I empathize because I've right. been there as a hairdresser. You're under the gun. You you don't want to lose the ticket. But is it really worth it trying to cut a corner here and there when you really know you're supposed to do something right? And instead, just being honest with the client and, and going, look, right. we don't have time for all of this today. Here's what you really need. You know, let's figure this out, you know? Right, right. I think because that is if we could adopt that philosophy again and get our mindset back in that, um, it would enable us to ha have more success uh, in what we do. Um, you know, it's, it's been a very interesting experience watching this industry change since I began and watching the phases that we've gone through. Uh, but what surprises me most is how much, not how much we've learned about hair, but how much we don't know about hair right. that we actually don't know. I mean, again, you know, some of our students, you read their notes yesterday, mm -hmm. said I've been doing hair for 28 years and, and nobody ever went the deep surface. into the yeah. hair, which makes me go, well, wait a minute. This is just like, this is like the first step in hair color. If you don't understand the canvas that you're working on, if you don't understand <clears throat> what it contributes, if you don't understand the challenges it can create, one, if it's not in great, if it's not an optimum condition, you know, my saying, you know, it's what my mentor always said to me, for optimum results, it requires optimum condition. Simple as that. You can't paint trash and make it beautiful. All you do is get a different <laughs> color of trash. Right. So the whole, the whole idea is to respect our canvas and what we work on. You know, we had this client <clears throat> for a lot of years who came to us from Hawaii to do her hair and she is Hawaiian. Her natural level was level two. And we made her platinum blonde. Wow. And we, we kept her platinum blonde and her hair, she grew it down to her waist and it was platinum blonde. Now, the only reason I'm saying that is that Platinum blonde is the very edge of death for hair. <laughs> I mean, that's where it is. Yes, <laughs> it's the very the edge of death. Yes, the precipice. 
And in order to maintain it on short hair, not such a big deal. But to maintain hair that's like 36, 38 inches long. That is a big and deal. And it's platinum blonde. That's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. But she came to us because we respected the hair. And we got her to be on the right regimen. And so her behavior, because she knew that she was at the edge of the cliff. I mean, right. I was very upfront and transparent with her. I said, I have you on the edge of the cliff. The next step is breakage. I said, so it's up to you. Do you want to come back to me and continue to have your hair grow? Or do you want to have bad habits and not follow what I tell you to do and have your hair break? Well, I don't yeah. want my hair to break. Good. Then we are both in agreement that you will follow what we recommend. <clears throat> and she did. And so, you know, you, you can do that. If you maintain, if you maintain the hair and if you understand, you know, not all hair will be able to get the platinum. Okay. Period. Um, yeah. That's why not all level two heads of hair will make platinum. They won't get there. They'll break before they get the platinum. And <laughs> there's a reason for that. It has to do with the pigment that's in the hair and how much of one you have over the other and how easy right. that hair is to lighten. Also the texture of the hair, all of those kinds of things. But mm -hmm. I think that that is why it's important for us, and we both feel this, to give that foundational information so you understand the hair. Yeah. Because, you know, yesterday we said to him at the end of the class, can you see how many things can go wrong <laughs> just because the hair, just because yeah. of the hair? We haven't even gotten to like, the formula no. selection, the developer no. selection. We no. literally just talked about one variable, the right. hair, right. you know? And, and Dennis, I think you, you'll agree with me in that, like, you know, what our mission really is, is to empower our students with knowledge to put them back into the driver's seat as professional yeah. hairdressers and to turn it more into a prescriptive type dialogue right. with your client. You know, if you go to the doctor and, you know, the doctor's like, we don't have time for this procedure today. You say, okay, you doc. Yeah, they reschedule <laughs> it and you right. still get charged for an office visit. That's right. Now I'm not saying, you know, do nothing and charge them, but you know, you, you know, if, if they need that reinforcing treatment, Start them on the regimen today right. and then get them, get them back in. But it's only going to behoove you because you're setting yourself up for success. Absolutely. I mean, we all have that little voice. We know when something's questionable. Oh, anytime, yeah. anytime that I've ever done something contrary to what I thought or actually let myself be, you know, for, for lack of a better, better word, pushed around by a client or yeah, they bullied you, know, you. they bullied yeah. you into doing it <laughs> it has never turned out right and it's always ended up being my fault and I had to fix it I spent more time doing it and it's like and then after that you have you kind of have like a little PTSD because when you see their name on the book then your stomach sinks you're yeah. like oh. you'll go looking for medication I need medication yeah. before she comes or the in. bathroom yeah you know, one or the other but it, yeah. it's just like, we want to save you guys some heartache from our heartache that we've experienced sure. and, and also pass on the knowledge that we have in order to, again, empower you so you don't have right. to have these situations. Well, you know, Max, uh, I tell the story a lot about a woman who came to me many years ago and wanted a perm and her hair was long and it was in terrible shape. It was like held together with one disulfide bond. I think that's all she had left. <laughs> and I said, look, I would love to give you a permanent wave. Um, I'm glad you're, you know, that you're here. I said, however, I, I, I won't do it now because your hair will not sustain a chemical service. My concern is that your hair will break. And so I think that we need to put you on a regimen of reconstruction treatment until we get a little bit more strength in that hair and it can support a permanent wave. And she looked at me 
with this disdain on her face, right? Like, and she goes, you know, I can get my hair permed at any salon here in town. And I said, you know what? You're right. You certainly can. And I said, and that's your prerogative. I said, but for me, as a professional, it's a lot easier for me to protect my reputation than to try to recover my reputation after doing what I know will end not good, that I know will end in failure. And so with that, she ripped off the hair cloth and she walked out of the salon. Everybody in the salon turned around and went like, oh, what happened? What happened? You know, you know how the salon is, right? Gossip City. Right. <clears throat> and so two years later, I get a phone call. And the reception said, there's a, a lady on the phone. She wants to talk to you. And so I picked up the phone. And I said, this is Dennis. How can I help you? She goes, you know, you may not remember me. She said, but two years ago, I came in and asked you to give me a permit. You refused. And I went, no, I remember you. You just don't forget those kinds of things. And she said, well, she said, I want you to know you were correct. I went to a salon down the street. They gave me a perm and a spot the size of a softball broke off in the top of my head. And she said, I've been letting my hair grow back out. And she said, my hair is longer now. And I would love to have you give me a perm. And I promise you, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, let the receptionist set you up for a consultation. You come in and we'll, we'll sit down and we'll chat and see if we can find some common ground and if we can move forward on this service for you. So I handed the phone to the receptionist and I walked to the back room and nobody was around and I went, yes. Right. Because I knew I was right two years ago. She validated that I was right when she called me back. And so sometimes you have to just say no. You know, look, sometimes the patient <laughs> will not sustain this procedure. Exactly. You know, and I, I can't put whole COVID bonds back in her hair. But what I could have done is I could have repaired it, added strength to it using treatments and things of that sort. To get it strong enough so right. that, you know, down the line, we could do a chemical service on our hair. Sure. So it, that was, that's the thing, man. It's like, you know, one of my other mentors taught me really early on. She went, Matt, once a steak is well done, it can never be medium rare again. She goes, Amen. It's, it's the same with the hair. <laughs> And sometimes I'll actually use that with a client. Yeah. And they kind of, it, it's a little, you know, it can kind of come across a little crass, but it does communicate exactly what you're talking about. And right. that's the other thing is like most clients know when their hair is compromised. Oh, they do. You they know, do. unless they're delusional, you know, they know that it is spaghetti when wet, Brillo when dry. You know? It's like when you were seven year old, seven years old, and you told your mom or your dad, I need that. And you didn't really need it. You wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's what I find happens sometimes is that they say, I want this. You know, you can talk to me. You can tell me it's not right for my skin tone. You can tell me all that, but I want it. And, and, you know, I, I've had a client like that who tells me she wants this. And my little voice just goes, no, that's not what we should do. And um, I kept telling her, you know, I kept saying, look, I know what you say you want, but I'm telling you, if I go there with you, you will not be happy. And so she came in one time and she said to me, she says, OK, look, here's what I want. I'll take total responsibility if you'll just do it. Mm -hmm. And I said, mm, I, can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. I said, uh, you know, because I don't know whether you've got good behavior or poor behavior. Right. You know, but I mean, it's still my, on you. Yes, it's still on me. She's not going to say, yeah, but I forced him to do it. Not when she's banging out those Yelp reviews. That's right. You so, know, you have to be very, in, in our business today, and, and especially with social media, 
you know, we used to have the old sayings like one unhappy client will tell 10 people. Well, that's not true today. One not unhappy anymore. client will tell 10,000 people with just one post on Yelp. And so you have to be really concerned about your reputation because, you know, if you try, it, it's hard to recover a good reputation if you lose it. Yeah. Because think about, I always think about people that you've known for a long time and maybe the first time you met them, you guys didn't hit it off, right? And now it's like 15 years later. And you're at a social function. And they say, you know, remember when we met? I didn't like you. You were a jerk. But I like you now. It keeps coming back. It oh, continues yeah. Oh, yeah. to come back. My best friend, Rudy Espinoza, when I destroyed his mother's hair. Right? That was my first hair color nightmare. At every holiday party, she says, let me tell you what this kid did to my hair about four years ago. Let me tell you what this kid did to my hair about 10 years ago. It kept coming back and coming back and coming back. And I just went, mm, no, don't need that. Don't need that. Don't nope. need to ta have medication. <laughs> Hard pass. Hard pass, yes. Or as my wife says, super no. <laughs> exactly. Super no. So, yeah, I thought yesterday was really great. I thought, uh, you know, just spending that much time working on the hair. The, I mean, what I thought was interesting is how, you know, we not only talked about just hair in general, but we talked about different ethnicities, global ethnicities, and how, you know, how the people in Asia and Africa, what, what specifically happens to them genetically so that there's predominance of darker hair or people in Sweden, you know, how do they typically, how come they typically have a lot of lighter head, lighter hair, you know? And I thought pointing those things out were real important. Uh, it helped them kind of understand that, uh, you know, that it really is, hair is really very interesting, you know, the whole experience. Mm. And, and I, I was, uh, weren't you surprised that about when we talked about the life cycle of hair, how many thought that was new information yeah. because we hadn't really focused on that before. And uh, well, I thought. Oh, what I was going to say is a lot of people, you know, like the, the last time you actually <coughs> hear about that is usually beauty school. Yeah. You know, you, you, you memorize those four stages so that you can pass your state board. But, right. but even, even I remember in beauty school, no one really put any kind of stress on it or even right. that it was truly a life cycle right. and that the hair is always constantly in flux going through this. Right, right. And we didn't even talk about the fact that the texture of the hair, the shape of the hair will change based mm -hmm. upon how the follicle is positioned in the subcutaneous layers of the skin. Because if the follicle is, because like on curly hair, the follicle is different. Right. And that's why as the hair grows out of the scalp, it grows out like a ribbon. You know, it's more flat in shape. Right. And, and that nothing is consistent. So like the growth pattern on the head, it's all random. Sure. You know, that's why there are people that have, well, most everyone, has more hair follicles on one side of their head than they have on the other. And, and then you t that affects density, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm painting hair and I'm doing just the pattern up the back, up the sides, down the middle, up the back, up the sides, down the middle, I'm gonna end up with more color on one side of the head sure. than I have on the other side of the head. And I'm gonna go, how did that happen? You know, I mean, and we're always more hair on one side, clients, less on the other. Yeah, we're always talking to clients about growth pattern because clients go, "Well, I feel like I have less hair on this side than this side." I go, "Well, no, you have a difference in growth pattern. This side of your hair grows forward, so when you brush it back, it puffs up. This side, this side of your hair grows backwards, so when you brush it back, it lays flat against your head. Right. Well, then how do I get it to lay out?" Well, you blow dry it forward first, then you push it back. Now you get volume. And uh, right. it's just things like that, that 
really play a big role in what we do in the salon that is important for people to to know. You know, I mean, uh, we talked about we talked about applying balayage to hair that's wet. I personally, as a hairdresser, don't do that. I don't prefer that, but because for me, I tell the story of the shape. So the hair has to be at least eighty percent dry, so that I can read the curl pattern, so that I can place the color where it needs to be. So when the light strikes it, you know it. it gives me the color that I'm looking for. And I, you, do you know how many people don't even think about that when they do pay, hair painting? Yeah, they just, I, I they actually just... do know that because I've seen <laughs> it in just... classes. <laughs> and curly hair, and even just addressing curly hair differently than, you know, straight hair. Yes. You know, yes. like I know, I know some people who would take a, a whole head of curly hair and flat iron it before and then they either place paint the color. it or foil it dry, as opposed to a, like actually approaching it in a more what I like to call like a curl by curl, yeah, coloring method. Right. You know how when when I have a client that has a lot of that curly hair, for me, I would the way I approach that is I don't even try to weave it because first of all, if you if you do a weave on curly hair because of the movement in the hair it's so textured it hides the weave that you're doing anyway plus it looks like a splotch of color yeah. so what i do instead is i take like my lightener and i take my hands and i dip my hands in my lightener and i run them together and i just scrunch the lightener into the curly hair mostly around the back of the head where it's really short too short to do any kind of color placement mm -hmm. And it doesn't give you those squiggly lines. It just gives you a glow. And it just, yeah. just gives you a nice glow on the outer edge of that curl. But people don't do that. People have to either do it wet when, and, and you know, we talked about this. You know, it's like if you do a balayage and it's really not good placement, your blending is off, what do you do? Curl it because <laughs> it makes it look different, <laughs> makes it look more acceptable. <clears throat> so, you know, we, we don't approach the hair in a state that it's going to be on most of the time. That's what I always ask a client. Where do you, how do you wear your hair most of the time? Right. You know, and, and if this client wears her hair down all the time and doesn't wear it in a ponytail, doesn't ever pull it up, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the back of that head putting foil placement, which she's never going to see anyway right right you know so um i'll put it where it's strategic and there's places where it's not strategic. like that whole spot between the nape line and the top of the occipital that whole width around there the back mm -hmm. quadrant okay unless she's putting her hair up unless that haircut is layered if she just wears it down all the time leave some of that alone you don't because you're not going to see it anyway. Right. Unless you you would have to part the hair and like open it up. Right. But as long as you're hitting, if she wears a pony, you're hitting the perimeter. You can, you can also space your internal foiling out more. Oh, absolutely. And the other thing too, that to me personally, like I, I find that when you're, when you're foiling the back, number one, the head is so round, right? Especially at the occipital bone into the nape. You know, I rarely bring my foils all the way up to the scalp in the back anyhow. Like I do mine a little more kind of uh, floated away. Yeah. So that I don't, I, number one, you don't get those lines. A lot of times because you're working a square foil on a round surface, it'll tend to move away on its own anyway it doesn't matter but, how amazing of a foiler you are it's just it's a matter of physics you know exactly so, exactly yeah you're using hard geometric lines on a curved surface so the mm -hmm. best thing to do is to set a horizontal line in your mind and a vertical line and then section on the bias because right. if you section on the bias, 
when that hair is released, it's going to flow naturally around that curved surface. It's, it's but all people about do, the angles, baby. They, you, they do railroad tracks, you know? And nobody's hair highlights like that. If you go to the beach and you spend a year at the beach, you will right. not have bop, 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 highlights nope. like that. So, again, we got uh, we digress. We talked about the hair. Now we're talking about painting the hair. Crazy, crazy. But there's a lot to it. Even before you think about color, thinking about all the other things that are necessary to understand about the hair before we paint the hair. Absolutely. And, and uh, that's what I loved about yesterday. I'm excited about next week because next week we get to dig in the hair color chemistry and uh, that's going to be some hot, hot tamales. Hot that's fun. right. So maybe, hot maybe fun. next rabbit trails, we'll do a little recap of that number too. Yeah. Especially when you tell them there's no such thing as black hair. <laughs> they go, what? <laughs> but, 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 you know, um, so it should be lots of fun. But I think we've covered a lot here today, Max. My God. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, as always, it's been fun just, uh, you know, talking and chatting about this kind of stuff. And uh, it's our favorite thing to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, are, we really have a great industry. I, I, I really am glad that I had the opportunity to be part of it. And uh, it's a fun business, man. Uh, Absolutely. You know, if you're not laughing because you enjoy it, you're laughing because you can't believe the craziness that's going on. But it always keeps you laughing. Because yeah. there yeah. comes to sometimes you just kind of laugh anyway. You have to laugh. That's the only way to get, you know, they say laughter is the yeah. best medicine. It's the only way to get through it. Because you could yeah. easily go into a rant on pretty much everything that that people talk about. I mean, but we'll, we, uh, we'll talk about that later. So look, for all of you that have watched us today, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you've gotten something out of this session. Uh, sometimes we get to carry it away and we're talking about stuff. I'm not sure that there's a lot of nuggets, but I think there's some nuggets in here that you'll, you'll be able to use. And uh, we want to thank you so much for watching us here on YouTube. Our subscription uh, list is growing. Uh, if you've not yet subscribed, we invite you to subscribe to our channel here. Also, check the little bell down below so you get notification anytime that we drop a new Rabbit Trails or a new episode, whatever program that we are doing. Remember that you can always reach us. You can reach us on Instagram, not today, but possibly tomorrow. No. And you can find Max. He, he is at Maxim Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. Uh, we invite you to uh, visit our website, which is www.gurunation.net. And uh, you can take a look at our educational catalog, the classes that we offer, and the upcoming classes that we have scheduled at this point. We have already posted a uh, hair color school winter session. It begins January 10th, 2022. Uh, remember, we only take 10 students in this program. We are with you for 30 days, 24 seven. So um, it's a great immersion into the world of hair color. Uh, as I said to them yesterday, we can't guarantee you that you'll be an expert colorist after going to hair school. We can't even guarantee you that you'll be a good hair colorist after going to hair color school. But here's what we can guarantee you. You will have all the tools you need to direct your future in the world of hair color. We give you all the tools from the foundation of hair to working with chemicals, to formulation approaches, to technique approaches, all of those things involved in that program. We are very, very excited uh, about the program. And so you can sign up now if you wish, and uh, you can check that out on our website. If you have problems getting to our website, sometimes people don't clear their cash or, or clear their cookies. And so then it makes it hard for you to access the website, especially our educational page. What we recommend you do is right here on Instagram or, or go to Instagram and you can go to Real Captain Color at Real Captain Color. And I have a special link 
in my bio, you tap on that link, it'll take you directly to our website. So, oh, 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 Max, uh, our ride is here, my friend. All righty. So, uh, I will meet you in the clearing. It has been fun. Thank you, all everybody, right. for joining us. And uh, we wish you all an amazing week. Happy coloring to everybody. And as always, from my heart to you, I am Captain Color. I am out. Max, how about you? I'm out too. Everybody have a good one. Thank you for all your love and support. We'll see you on the other side. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care.